welcome you to part 3 of Enough is Enough and this should be part 2 of Satan Get Lost, My Destiny is Not for Sale. In part 1, we engage in destiny warfare, praise God. I welcome you all in the name of the Lord. And the things you are beginning to learn, they are not just for talk shows. They are for you to be able to practice and implement. And they are expected to bring you into light. Because until you know the truth, you will never be freed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So take a moment to remember to share the link with somebody that you love. Who needs to have this knowledge of the truth you never can tell how much solution you would have brought into their life so we saw yesterday how the destiny of Jacob was sold if this is the first time you're encountering the grace of God in Jesus global ecclesia please realize that these are series of teachings there are things you may never have heard before that you begin to hear and so it's important for you to look for the previous series for you to have a foundation for them a lot of foundation has already been laid yesterday defining what stars are what glories are what destinies are and um, we will not be able to go back into those details and so please we welcome you on board and if you have any questions please Join the question and answer through the WhatsApp link in the description box if you are watching on YouTube and then God is going to give you answer of peace. Praise God. So one of the examples, uh, one of the reality we learned yesterday is that it's not only God, only Satan that exchanged destinies and uh, we also understood that um, what our stars are and what our destiny are, the relationship between the star our glory and our destiny and uh, why the devil is so much interested in having stars glory and destinies covered in quotes stolen and then exchanged and many people are already victims of all of these um, spiritual sciences <laughs> praise god so we saw that jacob sold esau sold his destiny not jacob esau sold his destiny according to genesis 27 genesis 25 their story started and it was referenced in romans chapter 9 and hebrews chapter 12 how this happened and the bible said none of us should be profane and be foolish like esau who for one muzzle of meat sold his birthrights so in the story of esau and jacob we saw that by divine providence God Almighty also machinate exchange of destinies. And I'm glad I'm starting from that point. So that you don't think that the devil is the only one that exchanged destinies. God also exchanges destiny. God also transfers stars. <laughs> God also takes glory from one and gives to another. So when Esau did not value his destiny, even though by tradition, by law, he was supposed to receive the Abrahamic covenant blessing. He foolishly, ignorantly, despisefully, according to the scripture, sold his birthright. Your birthright represent your destiny, your glory, and your star. And it was sold. One of the things we are going to be emphasizing today is how spiritual transaction takes place for exchange of glory, stars, and destiny. So it was a non-refundable transaction for Esau. Even though, according to Hebrews chapter 12, he sought for it carefully with tears. There was no more place of repentance, brothers and sisters. There are certain destiny that are irrecoverable once you lose them. Hebrews 12 verse 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator. Please note that word fornicator and if you go to Galatians chapter 3, he will begin to list to you and such likes. The book of Galatians lists to us the works of the flesh and please mark it because we are coming back there which are lasciviousness, sedition, heresies, drunkenness, idolatry, and such like. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. So Esau was described 
as a fornicator and as a profane person. Holy Spirit, have, have mercy. What made him profane? Who for one muzzle of meat sold his destiny, exchanged his destiny, transferred his glory and his star. He sold it. No destiny. Hear me, children of God. No star, no glory can be stolen in cold exchange, aborted, or whatever terminology you want to use, without the owner's consent, consciously or unconsciously, or that without the authority granted the devil or God for the same exchange. I'm going to say that to you again. It is not only the devil that exchange destiny, transfer stars. God is also in the business. And that should make you afraid. Because in this subject, in many cycles, they will only focus on exchange of destiny as being evil. On a righteous platform, God also transfers stars, change destinies, exchange destiny. But in either case, whether in the platform of righteousness, as in the case that I've shared with you, or on the platform of if it is always by transaction somebody say transaction and say it louder say with me say transaction that is why it is called exchange is a trade by butter no destiny can be sabotaged no star can be transferred no glory can be stolen without authorization transaction the basis Behind the evil transaction, I will show you, but here it is deception. The basis for the righteous transaction, I will show you, but here it, in summary, it is called disobedience. <laughs> Zakoruna and Zakoruna Seketi. For ye know, verse 17, how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing of Abraham. He was rejected for he found no place of repentance, which means he repented, he confessed, he fasted, he prayed, though he sought back the destiny carefully with tears. But it was too late. There are some of you that your destiny is on transaction platform now and God, according to Proverbs chapter 1, which he asked me to show you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 1. He said, he's been trying to get your attention. You will not listen. You will despise all his correction. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 23. Let's take it from verse 22. Verse 20. Wisdom cried without. She utters a voice in the street. She cried in the steep place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered a word, saying, How long, ye foolish ones, will ye love simplicity? You despising your destiny. <laughs> you don't know the value of your life because your destiny speaks about your life. Your destiny speaks about what you are existing for. And it says, you don't know the value of your life because if you do know the value of your life your approach and the way you will guard your destiny you will guard your star you will guard your glory because there is no price that you can pay in exchange for your destiny nothing is more valuable to you than your destiny there are no two of you and you are so important in kingdom agenda that God release you to your generation but you do not know the value of who you are that's why you can open your leg to anybody that's why you can marry anything that's why you can study any course that's why you can lie anyhow that's why you can do anything you do because you do not know the value of who you are you have no idea how valuable you are you have no idea how much of an asset you have to God but the devil knows Every born child into this realm is most valuable, is of a great price to God. Mm. How long, ye simple one, will you love simplicity and the scorner delight in their scorning? And fools hate knowledge. 
What did they do? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make known my words unto you. And he said, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. I've been telling you, don't sell your destiny. Identify your purpose. Abide by it. Pursue it in holiness and righteousness. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. It's okay. And he said, well, when you finish the transaction of your destiny as you are learning today, I also will laugh at your calamity. How could God in all his mercies and love laugh at somebody's calamity? He showed you the prerequisite for it. You have been so full of yourself. You can't listen to any advice. You know better than the spiritual authority God has placed over you. You know better than the Holy Spirit guiding you. He said he will laugh at your calamity. That means definitely you are going to enter into calamity. Calamity is never part of anybody's destiny. When you begin to face calamity, your destiny is already on sale. Your destiny is already sold. I will mark when your fear cometh. When you find yourself in this kind of description, your destiny was already sold. Your star was already gone. <laughs> you know, in the in the teachings of destiny, purpose, exchange, and all of this star stuff, they will tell you you are living another man's life. No, not necessarily in every case. <laughs> but I will explain it to you in this series. We have the whole weekend to deal with this. Notice what we call calamity. Number two, fear. And when your fear comes as a desolation. Number three, number four, and your destruction comes as wild wind. And the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you these are the description of a destiny and a stolen star and exchange destiny. When distress and anguish come upon you, you alone, I'm showing you what happened to Esau when he foolishly, prevailingly sold his destiny. And you are being warned not to be like him. And how did he do it? The Bible says he despised the birthright. The one who wants to steal his destiny knows the value of the birthright. And he was looking for an opportunity to do so. My brother, I'm hungry. Give me out of your porridge. He said it's not for free. Sell to me now your birthright. Sell. Sell. Sell me your birthright. Did you hear what Jacob said? Sell to me your birthright. Sell it. Stop blaming the devil. He knows the job. He knows the job. Genesis 27 verse 31. When you read verse 32, And Esau saw to, said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day your star. Sell me this day your glory. What is the relationship between the birthright and the porridge. The foolishness of Esau was this. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall the birthright do to me? What's the importance of heaven? What's the importance of glory? What's the importance of a good life when my body cannot hold it? I want to sleep with you. The circumstances that presented themselves to you for you to compromise your dignity and your righteousness is a transaction ground demanding your destiny for sale. Now many of you begin to remember at the point where you sold your destiny. Some of you have sold your destiny a long time ago. Like Saul, who was still on the throne for maybe 30 more years, but his destiny was already sold. And David has taken over his star. David has taken over his glory. David has taken over his destiny. <laughs> when you slept with your boss, destiny was gone. When you slept with your dating partner, destiny was gone. It was long gone. Some of you will realize this weekend, since yesterday, that the reason why you've been praying and fasting, nothing happened is because you lack spiritual understanding on how destiny's glory can be recovered. It's not the way you have been taught. It's deeper. It's weightier for you to recover destiny. Heavy price has to be paid. Greater, far, far greater than the price you sold it. Warfare has to be involved. Some of you, your destiny was sold 
by your spiritual authority lineage. Your great, great, great grandfather already sold your destiny. And you think being born again one day? Without revelation, you remain a slave. I know I thought no child of God can be cursed. Yes, but ignorance is worse than curse. <laughs> and Jacob swore, said, swear to me. This is how destiny goes on saying, swear to me. And he swore unto him and he sold, he sold, he sold, he sold. He sold, he sold, he sold, he sold his birthright. He sold the reason of his existence. He sold his wife. He sold his children. He sold his business. This was how many of you have sold your destiny and you are living an empty life. Another life entirely. Totally different from the life God ordained for you. Many of you must begin to think back to that point because the Holy Ghost will remind you when you sold your destiny. It's never sold twice. It's never sold twice. It's only sold once. The very first transaction was more than enough. Any other thing you did after that is no longer your life. You are now a slave of the one to whom you sold your destiny. Now we've got a long way to go and a lot of things to learn, children of God. Because you don't value your life. You don't even know the value of yourself. Neither the value of your destiny. That's why you could do all that you were doing and all you are doing up till now. That's why you can lie anyhow. That's why you can dress anyhow. That's why you can talk anyhow. Because you don't know your value. And that makes you a profane person. And what did Jacob do? Then Jacob gave Esau bread, pottage of lintel. He asked for pot porridge. Pottage. He gave him more than he asked for because destiny was sold. Because he knew the value of what he just got. Because he was supposed to get double portion of the father's material inheritance. And he was also supposed to get the Abrahamic blessing. And like I said yesterday, this was a divine providence. But even though it was a divine providence, God cannot work against the law of destiny exchange. Because the law of destiny exchange is that there must be a transaction. God, before they were born, has already declared. Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved, and I've told you, I'll come and explain the meaning of that for you. But by providence, he said, Genesis 25, the elder shall serve the younger. But by law, by tradition, that is not supposed to happen. And that's what God wanted. And God cannot break the law of destiny exchange, star exchange, glory exchange. There must be a transaction. And the star of Jacob knew it. Nobody told him. He just knew it. He star told him, this is your opportunity. Don't miss it. He star told him, by destiny, you are supposed to exchange the destiny of your brother. He star told him. There are many of you that time and chances as pass you by. Because you wouldn't listen to your star. You had something he said to you. Grab this opportunity now. Grab this opportunity now. Every man of destiny is sensitive to time and opportunities. You have missed your husband. You have missed your children. You have missed your pastor. You have missed your destiny helper. Because you are not sensitive to your star. Already explain what your star is. To you yesterday. Zuru Kasadia Baruba. Zuru ne ekebronoman sekeria. I will not spear you the truth. I will not. I will not spear you the truth. Tabruma ike suprubu. Sipo kasileb. You, this which you are hearing, shall never depart from you. It shall follow you all the days of your life to guide you to live according to your destiny. Father, take over. Sakromi hepakusi. Do you know the meaning of being profane? Someone that lack spiritual relevant or understanding. Someone that do not place value on spiritual things. You take with levity things of great value. That's what it means to be profane. And today, Holy Ghost sent me to you to tell you that your destiny is the most important thing about you. Don't put it on sale. And to those of you who have already sold your destiny a long time, there is still a way out. And so follow me every day. This is why God 
ordained this meeting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up the way you rose up from that fornication bed. The way you rose up after compromising your dignity as a Christian. The way you rose up after lying to your husband or your children. The way you rose up and you thought nobody knew and you thought nothing happened. The way you rose up and you thought by just confessing and cry two hours, cry it was over. And went his way. He didn't know a transaction has been completed. <laughs> Some of you, Shanko Riyama, that all those spice I come pray out two hours cry. It's not going to be the solution. For you to recover that destiny, there must be a reversal. And for the reversal to take place, price must be paid, war must be fought. And I will show you how it's done. Let me be more frantic with you. The husband you marry now was he supposed to be? The wife you live with is she supposed to be? The children that eventually came to you, what they supposed to be? Everyone gets what they are qualified for in the spirit. I'm telling you, you are the determining factor how the spiritual realm down play to you. What did Jacob do? Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Come on. That's the problem. That's the emphasis number one today. Despising. You can only despise what you don't know its value. But there's a particular word you need to take note of, which I also mentioned yesterday. Supplanter. Genesis 27 verse 36. He had the lamentation of Esau on how his brother stole his destiny, stole his star, and stole his glory. And he said, it's not he rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me. That means he has outsmarted me. He has deceived me. Do you call that deceive? Because the devil knows the value of your destiny. He will walk on you. He will be on your case until you sell it by deception. Masikiria. He took away my birthright and now behold he has taken away my blessing. When your destiny is taken, the blessing is gone. They are all consequential. Get yesterday's teaching for details on this. Let's go on with what the Holy Ghost has in stock today. Long way to go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Are you getting blessed out of God? Yeah. So, every star exchange, every destiny exchange, every glory exchange, they all happen on spiritual trading floor. <laughs> ah! that you have understanding. And there has never been any straightforward way of trading destiny. Either for selling by the deceptor, by the buyer, or recovering it. It also comes through spiritual outsmart. Did you hear what I just said? Who understood? Please repeat in your own understanding. I'll say that again. Destinies are sold. So when you use the word stolen, it's not correct. Because no destiny can be stolen because they are all sold. <laughs> Do you understand now? No destiny can be stolen because every destiny exchange, every star exchange, every glory exchange happen on a spiritual market. We are transactions were taking place. That's why we talk about the lawful captive. Spiritual realm answer to protocols and process and judicial system. That's why you see among the stars, they call, they say they, this one are sold. Are sold to the devil. That's the correct word. Some of them have been coming out and have been telling you, I have sold my soul. Exactly. That's what they sold. And you will understand the context of that language during this time. Why did they sell their soul? For fame, for money, for marriage, for children. The devil will never give you anything without transaction. God will never bless you without transaction. So who understood now? Say it in your own understanding. Bless you. Nothing to rush. You must understand. So if that sank, then I can move on. But there are certain things I'll keep repeating to you. If thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, and do as he has commanded it this day, not moving to the left or to the right, all these blessings, that's a transaction. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless. 
that's a transaction. Bring you all the tithes into my storehouse. Prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven. That's a transaction. Nothing comes from spirits without justification. I'm telling you, sons and daughters of God. Some of you think God is a Father Christmas. You are joking. Yeah, yeah, Korea. Sakuski Manadiska. About man of God, Jesus has paid the price. Yes, he did. But you got to do the rituals. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. So to recover stolen destiny, as we call it, but I've proven to you that it's never stolen. You sold it. <laughs> hey, I will prove things to you from the scripture today. So don't be bambusu. There are some of our brothers that may not have gotten this understanding that gather you together and say, ah, every destiny that is stolen, bah, bring it back, bring it back. My brothers, shut up and sit down. It was not stolen. You sold it. And it doesn't come back by dancing. He comes back by his intelligent recovery. Intelligent recovery. Intelligent recovery. I'm going to show you things today, brothers and sisters, by the Holy Ghost. So that some of you will take on responsibility and go after your destiny recovery. Saria, Safrina Suti. There are some of you, the children that were supposed to come through you, you lost them. And that's the hard, hard, hard truth. The husband you were supposed to have, you lost them. Whether you like to hear it or not, you lost them. You lost them because... You don't know the value of your life. Nobody taught you and when you were being taught, you were not listening. And there come a point from Proverbs chapter number one that we have been reading. Ah, let me go and finish it. Proverbs chapter one. We stop at verse um, 26 somewhere there. Thank you, Jesus. I want to show you. He said, then you shall call upon me. I will not answer. And then you will start night with you. Do as many as you want. The transaction was done because you will not listen to the truth. Verse 25, but you said at naught, and he told you, I will love when your calamity come, when your fear cometh as desolation, when destruction cometh upon you like a white wind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Relate this one to Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15 to the end. Verse 28 is where I'm going now. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They did God say unto you that answering prayer shall all flesh come. This is telling you there comes a point that God will stop answering your prayers. What is he going to answer your prayer for? He rejected Saul and he stopped talking to Saul till he died. Because Saul sold his destiny. And I will show you how he did it today. I'm telling you sons and daughters of God, be afraid if you have to be afraid. Be very afraid. The life you are now living, is it your original life? Or you are just empty brain? Empty air. Empty life. No matter of God. But me, I'm still born again, you. Are you sure? Are you very sure? <laughs> yeah. Should we describe you as born again with sold destiny? When the purpose of your existence has been sold, what else are you living for? Listen, Saul was occupying the throne, but in the spiritual realm, what did you read that the Bible says? The Spirit of God departed from Saul and went where? He went to David and an evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. Kashakutaya! Destiny gone! Satan took over. He died as if he was not anointed. I appeal to you today, go after your destiny if you lost it. Go after your destiny if you lost it. You won't be the first. Satan comes after the destiny of every man. You are watching the devil taking away the destiny of your children. And you are saying children of nowadays, you will have case to answer to God, I'm telling you. You want the devil taking away the destiny of your husband? Why are you his wife? Zanzukruma Akishki handles, brother. The battle of life is the battle of star, battle of destiny. That's all that life is all about. He will call upon me, I will not answer. They shall seek me early on the prayer meeting you have been missing. You will now start your own. 25 days fasting and prayer, biri biri. What did God say when you start that? They shall not find me. So say, God has stopped talking to me. So he went after the witch of Endor from frying pan to fire. <laughs> Why? For they hated knowledge like Esau and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They wouldn't listen to any of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But also, Akinet unto me shall do assembly, 
and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. The greatest fear of the devil over you is that you will discover purpose. You will be available to be empowered for that purpose and you will be pursuing that purpose. There was a time in my life when the enemy was haunting my destiny to ground me completely. But oh God had mercy on me. Zazuria! Why? He helped me to place value on my destiny. And that's why you are hearing me today. So don't be, don't think any strange thing is happening to you. We are all being hunted by destiny killers, star killers, and they will make sure if they can't get you to do it, they will make sure they walk around you to make God change your destiny. If they cannot change your destiny by themselves, they will walk around you to make you do things that will make God change your destiny. Did you hear what I just said, child of God? Who understood? Say it loud. Go ahead, tell us what you understand. Christian OKK, do you understand, sir? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Abin Bola Alash OK. Do you understand? I don't want to go ahead of myself, but I'll get there. But let me say it, even though I will still get there, but it's coming now. That devil couldn't get Adam to sell his destiny. He had to use his wife. At the end of the day, Adam made the blunder. I will show you the sin of Adam. Because the Bible says. Through one man, sin entered into the world. But the Bible also says, Adam was not in transgression, but the woman was. So what was the sin of Adam? If all have sinned through Adam, and we need repentance, and we need redemption through Jesus, and the Bible says Adam did not sin. Adam was not in the trans... Adam was not deceived, at brother. But the woman was deceived, was in the transgression. So it's the woman that transgressed. How come? that Adam was now judged by God. Let me announce to you the sin of Adam today. The sin of Adam was, Adam began to listen to the woman he was supposed to control. Duh. God spoke to Adam to take authority, to dominate, to be in charge. Adam was listening to the instruction of his wife. That was the error of Adam. And what did God say? Very clear in the scripture. And to the man, God said, because thou art in it, that was the error of Adam. That was how Adam saw this destiny. Adam left his position of authority over the wife. And that was why you saw God decree upon the woman, unto your husband shall your desire be, and he shall rule. So over you, so those of you, that modern day women, your destiny is long gone with your arrogance and insubordination. Find every excuse to remain disrespectful to your husband. Find every excuse to remain insubordinated. Just find it. You have no destiny. It's gone. You may not hear this. If you continue like that, God will exchange your destiny. God will find another woman for that man. Don't joke with the man of destiny. If he's on God's pathway, before you know what is happening, don't think you can be out of course and you think God will pamper you. In your very own eye, you will see God replace you in destiny. I'm telling you, nobody may be ready to tell you this truth. There is nothing like, I made that wrong choice. There are those who made the right choices and realize that the right choice they made is in somebody nature. And that the same goes for a woman. You find yourself in a marriage with a man who is not ready to go in the pathway of God. For how long are you going to be there? Is this man of God encouraging because no, I'm encouraging destiny. If you are in any of these circumstances, you need advanced wisdom. Because nothing is more important to you than destiny. Forget marriage. You, you won't. You you stand before God like Adam and say, "The woman you gave me made me to sell my destiny." It doesn't prevent God from judging you. Wake up, sons and daughters of God. And those of you who are single, marriage is not the most important thing. It's your destiny. If you marry for destiny, you are a good pathway. If you marry for nonsense, you are doomed. So it's not about I'm getting. It's about. What is my destiny? Do you know destiny? Whatever you do in life must be controlled by the knowledge of your destiny. Your friends, your pastor, destiny. It's not popular, you know, and I don't want to be. I just want to be in the center of the will of God. The popularity of the Holy Ghost has not given you his thought of God. It's not. I'm not interested in telling you the truth. Are you still with me? So every star, so now I will stop using stolen star because you now, you now know that it's no longer stolen. It's sold. Every star, glory, destiny that is sold, they are also through deceits, 
beguilement of which will eventually be seen by the one who lost the destiny. Just like Eve saw that the devil, the serpent, deceived. This will happen because you are ignorant of the devices of the enemy. He's a deceiver. So for every so-called star, glory, destiny that is exchanged, transferred, to be recovered, there are heavier, greater prices to be paid. On a legitimate outsmarting ground because the one who's, who bought your destiny is never going to be willing to give it back to you. So you've got to stage. You've got, hear me and hear me well. You've got to know how to plead your spiritual case in the Supreme Court of Heaven. And even after the verdict has been given to your favor, you've got to know how to force out your destiny with spiritual intelligence. If you understand what I just said, you have all men most blessed. And listen carefully, do you know that every sold destiny are sold at an unbelievable giveaway prices? Adam sold his destiny for losing authority over his wife, whom he was supposed to be leading. The woman already rebelled against the authority of the husband. Now do I know? That is clear in the scripture. And as such, Adam lost his destiny to the devil. How do I know? The devil told Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, clearly the devil told Jesus that it was delivered to him. It was sold to the devil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I got to now, I want every Christian anywhere in the world to understand this. It will now reveal to you what Adam lost and who Adam was. And what was the destiny of Adam. The destiny of Adam was revealed by the destiny of Jesus. Adam was the king of the universe. Did you hear what I said? God brought everything under the authority of Adam. God committed all the works of his hand to Adam. All the works of his hand. All the works of his hand. All the works of his hand. You may not see that clear picture unless the Holy Ghost open your eyes in Genesis. But by the time you begin to read the book of Psalm, what is man that thou art much for him? But you have brought him to have dominion over the works of your hand. And so what are the works of the hand of God? The moon, the stars, the galaxies, the water, the sea, the fishes. And Adam was to rule over the whole earth. And when we talk about the earth, earth has both the spiritual space and the physical space. I've taught you that. So every being on earth, physically, visible and invisible, were all under the dominion of Adam. When God was giving Adam this dominion, Adam was here to have a physical manifested corrupted body. He was clothed in the glory of God in the garden. You remember he was chased out after he lost his dominion and somebody else took over the dominion of the death of, of Adam. And the name of that person, Jesus gave us, he called him the prince of this world. Adam was supposed to be the prince. So clearly listen, everything the devil is governing over before Jesus came, they were all under the domain and dominion and rulership of Adam. That was the destiny of Adam. Adam sold it on the platform of becoming a puppet for a woman. The devil couldn't get Adam. It's why he brought him down. Fear women. Fear women. When you read Proverbs chapter 7, many mighty men has been crushed by her. Her path leads to her. Fear women. Adam, a man of covenant. The devil got hold of Mother Sarah and made him to give back to the problem of Abraham. Fear women. I'm telling you, fear women. God just called Moses. See, Bora was going to stand against him. Why? The devil knows the weakness of women in destroying their own men. He has done it many times. So he knows. So women, be careful. The devil knows you're supposed to be the helper of destiny. But when the devil changed your destiny, when you transact your destiny with the devil, you will become the destroyer of destiny. I'm telling you, Sipora became the stumbling block. Shouldn't she be excited over her husband? She wasn't going to do what the husband said. And the Bible said God wanted to kill Moses. The destiny of, of Moses was about to be sabotaged by his wife. By his wife. Every wise woman built. When they sell their destiny to the devil, they become foolish. They pull down. No one pulls down like, like a woman. They don't know their power to support. So when their destiny is sold, you see them destroyed faster than the devil can do it himself. What the devil cannot do, women will do for the devil. You heard what I just said. 
I know women won't, won't talk on this one. What the devil cannot achieve, women will achieve it for him. They've done it many times. That's why he's raising them to become feminists, to be insubordinating against the decree of God. Thank you. So daughters of Zion, make up your mind to walk with the power God has given you to give strength to your men. Don't allow the devil to use you. Only woman, God said, when he behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, it will be one without the word. A woman can preach the gospel without opening her mouth and souls will be one. The devil knows that. Can you see the power you have? <laughs> That's why my ministry to women talks about the power of womanhood. You are so powerful. Stop underestimating yourself. There are enough teachings in the catalog to remind you who you are. I may learn how to bring out the power in the women. Today is not the day for that. We have a long way to go. So that was how Adam lost his destiny to the devil. And Apostle Paul said the devil was the god of this worldly system. And every structural system, principality, powers, rulers, that you saw the devil establish. That is what Adam was supposed to establish. And that is what Jesus now came to establish when he said the kingdoms of this world has now been regained back. That's why I told in John 3, 14 to 16, the, the Bible said, for God so loved the world, this world, this earth, not just human beings, that he gave Jesus to recover both the earth and you from the slavery of the devil. By the error of Adam, for just simply not able to bring his woman under authority. In a home where the woman has the final say, the devil is the commander in chief. It doesn't matter if you earn more salary than your husband. It doesn't matter. By divine authority, 1 Corinthians 11, the Bible says the man is the head of the woman. And the Bible says, Abraham, Mother Sarah called Abraham Lord. The meaning of Lord means master owner. The one that owns you. Listen, you are a subject to your husband. Even if you are heading one billion dollar per month, you are under his command. He has the final say. If he loses that, that marriage is finished. I'm telling you, you don't have a marriage. We are the word of your husband is not final. You don't have a marriage. I'm telling you today, I don't care what you feel. You don't have a marriage. You don't have a marriage. If there are areas of your life you are holding back, you don't have a marriage. Be careful to what your husband is saying or what he's complaining about. I'm talking about marriage in Christ. So if you have an unbeliever as a husband or you have an unbeliever as a wife, you operate by a different kind of... Um, you will need advanced wisdom. You have a peculiar situation. But in a contextual marriage of a Christian, the husband is born again, the wife is born again, this law holds. You can't negotiate it. The scripture is also very clear in the options he has given to you if you are married to an unbeliever. But that's a big risk. It is a big risk, particularly for the woman where the husband is an authority, whether he's born again or not. It's a big risk. You can't afford to be under the authority of a man who is not controlled by God. It is a big risk. So that balance needs to be stricken so that you don't take this out of contest. You are a subject and I don't understand. I will still come and re-emphasize this. Because the Bible says, be a subject unto your own husband as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. The way you will be subjected to the Lord is the way you are commanded to be subjected to your husband. God is not saying be subject to God. If you marry God's choice, submit to that man. Because in the realm of the spirit, that man has power to cancel your prayer. That's the structure God has put in place. The Bible says, don't go, don't go pray if you have not been under authority of your husband, you are wasting your time. And the husband must love the wife as Christ loved the church. That's the balance. We will dwell more on this. But because we are talking about say, <laughs> if what if did that brought the whole humanity into disaster? That's why I'm sounding these heavy notes of warning. Because what the devil cannot achieve, women will achieve it for him when they sell their destiny to him. And all this disobedient disrespect that you give to your husband. It's a sign that your destiny is already on the, on the same. Some of you, you don't know what you are doing. That's what You don't place value on your husband. It's an evidence that you don't place value on God. The man means nothing to you. And then God means nothing to you. That's the scripture. That is the scripture. You don't have a higher spiritual authority over you. Immediate higher spiritual authority. But your husband, I'm telling you. 
So if you are not going to be that kind of a woman, those of you who are crazy praying, crazy prayer, you want to marry, you want to marry. If you are not ready to do this, forget marriage, you'll remain single for life. It's allowed. Thank you, Jesus. This is what the devil does to marriage of Christians and why many marriages of Christians, pastors are breaking. Because we have daughters of devil and those who gave themselves to Satan, who sell their destiny to Satan as wives, as gifts of the devil to this man. God brought Eve to Adam, but Eve sold her destiny to the devil. Many of you wives, go get back your destiny. Otherwise, you'll become a problem to that man. Because the devil is afraid of you. He knows you are more powerful than him. Did you hear what I just said? The devil knows you are more powerful than him when it comes to strengthening your man. So he will make you the one to befall the man. Let me stop there. <laughs> the same problem of Adam was the problem of Saul. Do you remember the drama that brought Saul into the kingship? Would you say God made a mistake? No. Ah, at a point, Saul began to listen to the people he was commanded by God to rule over. And that angered God. When, when you begin to be led by the people you are supposed to lead, you are no longer on God's side. No, you are not. When the people God wants you to lead and now the one leading you, you know the problem that is there. No matter what they say, God expects you to come back to him as your authority. You don't follow your followers. You follow God. No matter what your wife says. No matter what your subordinate says. What is God saying? God can speak through them. When Sarah came and said, Just cast out the bond woman. It, it, Father Abraham now had learned his lesson. He never asked God before he accepted Agar. This time he went to God. And God said, yeah, do what she said. That's the way to go as leaders. That's the way to go as husband. If you are married to a man that doesn't hear from God, you are married to the devil. <laughs> Don't marry a man that has never shared an encounter with God consistently with you. Surya Kazilia. Don't marry a woman that doesn't hear the voice of the Holy Ghost because the devil will lead him to you. What has God told you? As long as God has told you, it's for me to follow. I'm, I know, but what has God told you? Because I told God to talk to you. This is what God has told me. What has God told you? Ah, me just to follow. Ah. Don't marry that one. But man of God, he said we should be following. Yeah, you're not, you not, you not supposed to follow. You must have a witness. Because if God sent you into that marriage to be an helper, you must have a witness because you have the same Holy Ghost. You must have a witness. You are just waiting for the man to bring the authority upon it. Let's not go deeper. He saw sold his destiny for the muscle of meat. So sold his destiny by becoming a follower. The people say it. The people say it. What is God saying? Do you know Samson lost his destiny on the lap of Delilah? That's the power of woman I'm talking to you about. What the entire Philistine could not do together, Delilah did it for them. Fear women. <laughs> Satan knows the power of women. Do you know that Lucifer also lost his destiny? And because he knows the power of destiny, that's why he's coming after your own. Do you think the office the devil lost is vacant? Lucifer lost his destiny. He was cast forth as a profane, like Esau. And I've told you what a profane person means. One who takes with levity spiritual asset. That was how Lucifer was. And still is. He was cast forth as a profane. Because he did not appreciate the destiny that he had. And he was replacing destiny. Moses lost the opportunity to enter into the promised lands. His ultimate destiny. Because he allowed the people to, got, to get him angry. Just because of anger, he sold that opportunity. There are sin unto death, there are sin not unto death. But he, he couldn't, he couldn't enter. God just had mercy on him to go and look at the perimeter of it. The children of Israel lost their destiny because of unbelief. They sold their destiny to the next generation. <laughs> be careful, brothers and sisters. No destiny can be exchanged. No destiny, no star can be transferred. No glory can be exchanged without transaction. Whether you are conscious of that transaction, whether you are part of that transaction, or somebody who is a spiritual authority upon you was part of that transaction or not, nothing of such can happen. There is a transaction. All the women in this family cannot be pregnant or cannot sustain a marriage. There was a spiritual transaction. It is women that feed men in that family. There was a spiritual transaction. All the bloodline issues you are dealing with, there was a spiritual transaction. Listen, covenant unity with someone whose destiny 
was already exchanged, whose destiny was already sold, whose star was already transferred, automatically makes you a victim of the same. <laughs> This should make you afraid not to marry anything. Some of you will remember if you have been married or if you have experiences around you. The moment you step into marriage with this man, everything went wrong. Jehoshaphat joined alliance with Ahab, a man that God has decided must die. The first person that the spirit of death was looking for on the battlefield was Ahab. So if you are the one that came to join yourself with someone who has already sold his destiny, your destiny is the first to be gone. I'm telling you, be careful what you marry. Be careful the friends you keep. Be careful the places you go to work. Because you may be working on a covenant ground of evil. So this is the foundation for most marital crises that you see. Your life was good before you said I do. That's why I said to you, it's a big risk for you to remain in union, covenant union, with a man that is not submissive to the authority of Jesus Christ. Big risk. This is one of the reasons why the devil used sexual immorality as a trophy for most of the evil that has to do with destiny exchange. It's one of the fastest transaction platforms. So those of you who sleep around, congratulations. <laughs> That's why the first thing that happened in Zion is deliverance. And that deliverance is a platform by which your destiny must be recovered. And that's why restoration of soul is paramount once you are born again. The next thing that must happen to you is that your destiny must be recovered. If you are born again and you don't go after destiny recovery, you will languish and you will die as if you are not anointed. And this is the story of many Christians. Born again, destiny still locked up. You need to get your destiny recovered by revelation truth. That's why Jesus was saying to set at liberty the captives. It's a unique ministry of Jesus Christ to liberate destinies. Be careful of foolish marriage. Don't say I do, young men, young women, until you have settled all spiritual related matter. All these restaurants you go, you are not you see spiritual Google in the spirit. The spirit searches all the yeah, the deep things of God. You need to have searched out the spiritual database of this man. Look for his star. Marriage is not to the physical body. Marriage is with the star. Look for his star. Look for his star. Look for a star. If you can't find his star, following him, then you know something is wrong. Because once you see his star as a woman, your job is to make sure that star shine. Everything that is within your capacity. You have no other ministry outside your husband as a woman. Anything else you do, they are secondary. Your husband is your ministry as a woman because that's what God employed you to do to help his star to shine to the whole world. And that's what God is going to judge every woman who is married with. What have you done to make the glory of your husband to shine? That's why Satan loves women for evil and deceives them for evil because he knows their power is to make the star of their children and their men shine. But he will use them to do the opposite. Wake up, sister. That day, Joseph entered into the house of Potiphar with a glorious destiny and the covenant of prosperity. Potiphar began to prosper. That's what I'm talking about. He came with a greater spiritual power. So he subdued all the devil that would have made the life of Potiphar miserable. And what happened? Women, women again, women again. The moment that devil saw the destiny of Joseph, what did the devil do? He provoked Potiphar's wife against him. What did I tell you? Anything Satan cannot achieve by himself, he will use woman to do it. <laughs> Lay with me. Joseph said, how can I do this thing and sin against God? Okay, I will show you the other side of woman. Help, help, he want to rape me. They sent him to prison. As soon as he landed in prison, oh, his star began to shine again. Because that was the Ark of Covenant. And that led him to the palace. What do you think would have happened to Potiphar's wife when Joseph finally got to the palace? Surely she's going to be one of the first people that came to apologize. And that was, that was when she would tell the husband the whole truth. Because Joseph is now the boss of the husband. <laughs> when you know how to protect your destiny, your star, against all transaction. Look at the transaction that devil instituted for Joseph. 
He refused. You couldn't refuse your boss. Darn. So all those atrocities you were committing, and the ones you have done after Christ, after being Christ, you think they are just for fun? No, for your destiny to be recovered. There are prices to pay. But the Bible says, when we confess our sins, it's just intending to do. No, no, no. Just wait a moment. Wait a moment. You've been confessing and confessing what has changed. Because there is more. There is more. Every we are. Jacob enter, prosperity enter. As soon as he entered into Laban's house, Laban could not understand how he's prospering. He had to go and consult the Phoenician. They had to tell him, there is a star in your house. God is prospering me because of you. So even the devil know that it was because of him. So every sinful act is a transaction. That's why there is a salary to them. The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. It's a transaction. And there are advertisements to it. James chapter 1 verse 13. By verse 14 it says, But every man transacts his destiny when he is drawn away of his own desire and he is motivated. His willpower is enticed. Then when loss has conceived, when he agreed to sell his destiny, he bring it forth sin, and the moment you are in sin, your destiny is exchanged. And sin, when it is finished, you are paid death. And administration of death are the exchange of your destinies. Instead of being the CEO, you will be the gate man. Because the thief commit no but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The moment your destiny is exchanged, you become a slave of your new master. That's why everyone born of a woman drink iniquity like water. That's why everyone born in the image of Adam are automatic sinners. I don't want to go into the details of that. But the enticing part is where your, your willpower is being appealed to on the transaction platform and you have to make a choice that devil is a master marketer. You saw it from Genesis. That's the greatest skill of the devil. And Isaiah chapter 14 alluded to it that devil is a master in spiritual trading floor. You need the wisdom of the Holy Ghost not to buy his product. Because the devil will promote his product, death, and package it with lies. Brothers and sisters, destinies are traded in the spiritual market. And the gates of air are constantly shopping for destinies. Proverbs 27 verse 20 says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. The devil is a master marketer on the trading floor in the spiritual realm. You must remember that all creatures are made with willpower. And Satan, the devil, even deceived angels and he deceived the sons of God to do as he bid it. I'm telling you, the Bible says in the multitude of thy traffic. And when you read from modern version, in the multitude of thy trading, the devil is a traitor. Even angels are victims of his trading. He was the one. And look, the angel that left their first estate, they traded. And when they came, they exchanged marriage for technology. They lost their DNA as angels and they were bound in Tartarus and they gave us Nephilims. <laughs> and they can never be forgi forgiven. Jude 1 6, 2 Peter 2 4. Are you still in the house of God, sons of God? In Psalm 82. The sons of God that God gave instruction to govern the earth, the Bible says God charged them with folly. And he said they will be thrown to hell. They will die as men. We already studied this. Don't sell your destiny. Every time you are being tempted by the devil, said to Satan, get lost. My destiny is not for sale. So let me try and begin to close tonight. When you begin to mess with your star, if you want to know what your real star is, find out from yesterday's teaching. When you begin to mess up with your star, your destiny, your glory, the purpose of your existence, you don't care to know what your destiny is all about. You don't care to know what your purpose is. You don't care to know who you must marry. You don't care to know where you must live. You don't care. You are a profane person. What will happen is that you may get God to exchange your destiny. You remember the story in Matthew 25 or the story of the talent? This guy who got one talent, she, he became profane. I know you are a hard man. You reap where you don't sow. She, he doesn't appreciate the gift of God. What happened to him? His destiny was taken from him and given to another. God also extended destiny. Took his mercy from Saul. God said to Saul, I have given your destiny to your neighbor that is better than you. <laughs> Fear God, brothers and sisters. Find out your purpose of existence. It's the beginning of profanity. Find out the purpose of your children. Let your children know the value of their life. Let them know going to school Monday to Friday is not life. Their life is the discovery of their destiny. 
repent, repent. You can exist without fulfilling purpose. It is the greatest disaster that will happen to you in this life. Second Corinthians 3, 11 says, let Satan should take, get advantage of us on the spiritual trading floor. For we are not ignorant of his skills, devices. First Peter 5, 8 says, he is a devourer. He is looking for whose destiny to take. Jesus Christ says, he is a thief. And he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy your destiny. When you read the Ezekiel 28, verse 16, that's where you find the merchandise of Satan. Merchandise of the devil. He is a merchant. What does he say? What does he buy? He buys destiny. He buys destiny. At the cheapest price for that matter. He buys destiny. Look, I read it from you to you from Amplified Version. Ezekiel 28, verse 16. Through the abundance of your commerce, <laughs> you are in turn, you are internally filled with lawlessness and violence. And you sin. Therefore, I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God. And I have destroyed you. This is how destiny has sold. May you not stand before God empty. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Ephesians 6, 11, That ye may be able to stand against the wow, the tactics of the devil. The serpent beguiles. That's his job. He deceives. Many have sold their marriage, their destined children, their job, their ministries. On a platform of kissing, you can zip up five minutes pleasure. Destiny destroyed. Just for one thousand dollars that you think you need desperately, you sold your birthright, and your star was gone. Another takes your glory from you. What did Jesus Christ say? Hold fast, which thou art, lest another take thy crown from you. So Jesus is saying to you, your glory can be taken. We all have got glories. Be careful. You see the angle with which the Holy Ghost is coming out to you, so that you don't get over spiritualized. Give me my destiny. I get my destiny. Take a get that. You prayed the prayer yesterday. You went back into sin in the morning. What kind of rubbish is that one? You need to know the truth before your destiny can begin to get out onto the recovery pathway. He didn't send me to deceive you. He sent me to educate you onto dominion so you can get the devil subdued. Every sinful act gives you an exchange for that act. You definitely bought something called death. No matter how insignificant it is, something was gone from you. That little error may have cost you the husband of your destiny. May have cost you the next opportunity. Hey, when you see the devil being hard on your case, when your blood is boiling, when you feel like doing it, when, when there is pressure, just know there is something about your glory that is about to shine. That's the time you will say, get lost, Satan. My destiny is not for sale. Look at your life right now. Every challenge, delay, opposition that you are going through, they are all tactics of transaction for you to agree to the terms and conditions of the devil. Don't compromise. You are too expensive. Don't make yourself too cheap. The devil will do anything for you to have it. your destiny So Thank you, Jesus. Foolish talking. Arrogance. Hunger. Envy. Avoid all these things. Run away from them. Have nothing to do with all of these works of darkness. The wages of these things are dead, stolen, destroyed, and dead destiny. In the day that ye shall touch this tree, or ye eat out of it, ye shall die. Genesis 3 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you learning, child of God? If you haven't learned anything to learn, to die, learn the transactional skill of the devil. Let me see if I can close with Luke chapter 4 verse 5 to 7 and you will be amazed how much revelation is here. And the devil take on the mount of trans on the, on, the, on, the, on the wilderness of temptation the Bible said the spirit drove Jesus to be tempted. There is no temptation taking us that is not common. God will subject each and every one of us to temptation to pass destiny test. Jesus was, was not exempted. He was tempted in all ways yet without sin. And the devil Taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. In a moment of time, definitely this was taking place in the spiritual realm. And the devil said unto him, all this power. He was pointing Jesus to some power, right? All this glory I will give you, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give. This was the authority of Adam, sold to the devil. The kingdoms of this world, the power and its glory. The 
it all belong to Adam. We bless the name of the Lord for Jesus who got them back. Revelation 11, 15, the kingdoms of this world has now become the kingdoms of our God. And he wrote in John chapter 12, he said, now is the judgment of this world and now is the prince of this world. Cast out. Jesus paid the price. And I'm, I, I wish I can show you today, but for time. And what was the devil asking Jesus to do? Please, ladies and gentlemen, for you to know that the devil doesn't care who you are. He knew if you be son of God. You say you are a son of God, right? Okay. All right. I have another offer for you. It was all transaction. Every temptation is a transaction. You have the option to buy or not. What does the devil want? Hear it loud and clear. He wanted the destiny of Jesus. He knew Jesus was coming to reverse the error of Adam. And so he wanted Jesus to sell his destiny. Verse 7 is where the answer is. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be dying. That's a lie. The moment Jesus buy into that nonsense, God will need to send another Messiah. It means the devil was going to perpetuate his dominion over the earth. But Jesus, all power in heaven and on earth was given to him. Philippians chapter 2, Mark chapter 16. And he has the dominion now and he has given it back to us. And our job is to subdue the devil and prove that we know the truth and enforce the will of God on earth. So is there anyone tonight who has not given his life to Jesus? I'm sure you have enough reason to do so now because you are not safe until you are safe. You can never fulfill destiny. Everyone going to hell, they are going to hell because they did not live the life God ordained for them and the transaction reversal penalty and payment for their soul was rejected. Don't join them. Give your life to Jesus now and today. So the devil was negotiating the, the glory of Jesus, the star of Jesus. For any destiny to be recovered, the full price must be paid plus more. And how is it done? You need to take the case up in the court of heaven and the determining price according to the constitution of God must be paid and the war to enforce it must follow jesus had to pay for the destiny of adam to be recovered and all the sons of adam are you understanding me the destiny of adam was transferred the glory of adam was transferred to the devil are you hearing what i'm saying the throne of adam was transferred to the devil the command of the adam Adam transferred it. The star of Adam was transferred. And from that time, Adam became subject to the devil. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Have you sold your destiny? It's time for you to begin to go back on the path of recovery. And you want to say to the Lord, open my eyes to when my destiny was sold. If I didn't do it, who did it? When was it sold? How was it sold? Holy Spirit, open my eyes. How did I get here? Why are things not working for me? I want my destiny back in sevenfold. You will go to hell when you reject the full price that was paid. I give you some. Jesus became the price of God. God had to pay the price to get back his sons. It wasn't just, I'm the God. Okay, all of you are saved. No, he had to pay the price of suffering. He had to pay the price of becoming a man. And in becoming a man, he has to take our place in judgment. He had to replace us. And he feared that he will never resurrect. Jesus feared that he will be kept in hell forever. Because that's the penalty of Adam. Who in the days of his flesh cried with a strong cry in that he feared until God outsmarted the kingdom of darkness and wreaked the equation to the favor of Jesus. Because when they killed him, that was a transaction. And Jesus Christ said, it is finished. They didn't understand until he gave up the ghost. When he gave up the ghost and he appeared in hell, that was when they realized, what have we done? This guy got back the dominion for man. Hallelujah to Jesus. This is where you shout. He got it back. He got the word back. He got all the kingdoms of this world that the devil was bragging about in Luke chapter 4 back. He got the power back. He got the glory back. And he got back all the sons of Adam. He led captivity captive. He paid the price. Moses and Elijah appeared to him in glory and said, Are you going to manage? He said, Don't worry, I'll do it. He conquered death. 
And God said, I can't keep him in hell. You've got to resurrect. You pay the price. Check the teachings. Understanding and maximizing the power of resurrection. There should be about seven teachings on that. So anyone going to hell is because you reject the victory, the price for the reversal of your destiny. You reject it. So what do you want God to do? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Just a moment, ma'am. I just want to give them scriptural proof to what I just said. For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the exchange. Jesus' destiny was exchanged for our destiny. He became us so that we can become him. But you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in that he was rich but for your sake. He transacted his riches for you so that you, through his poverty, might be rich. Jesus sold his destiny to recover our destinies. So what else do you want God to do? Cursed is anyone that hangeth on the tree. He being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come to you. Jesus paid the full price for your destiny total recovery. All you need to do now is to believe and enforce it. Just confess him as your Lord. Repent of all your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ is so we cleanse you from all sins. Do the right thing and he doesn't need to pay that price twice. Once. He perfected us forever. The Bible says, He are bought with a price. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. He paid the price. Can you see? He bought us back. God paid the price for recovering of our destiny as former sons of Adam. It's not a free for all thing. Spirits don't respond to such things. Price must be paid. And there was warfare. He had to fight principalities and powers. We'll start from here tomorrow so that you can understand. Thank you, ma'am.